Hello, second grade. We are wrapping up adding three digit numbers today. And I could not be more excited. We are going to be showing all of these different ways that we've been solving, and we're gonna put them all together on this public record. I am so excited because I love seeing us put this work together and making the connections between all of these different strategies that you've been using. And you all as mathematicians get to decide which one helps you solve this best right now. And as you practice and practice and practice and do these problems over and over and over again, as you do them in math and as you do them in life, you're gonna be learning and growing too. So you might be using your base 10 blocks today and then next week you become such an expert that you want to do number lines because that helps you. Or maybe partial sums, once you got to use those this week, you thought, man, I don't need my models anymore. I can do this with my equations. So you have grown so much this over the last two weeks as we've been doing three digit numbers and I'm so excited to see how much more you grow as mathematicians as the year goes on. Let's get our learning, let's go ahead and check out our learning target and then we're gonna dive right in. I can add three digit numbers using place value. That's right, my friends, it's a different learning target today. Now each day, we might have had a similar learning target Right? Each day we were learning a different tool to use or a different strategy. And you were, like one day you were using your base 10 blocks. What a great tool to use. And that model helped you see these three digit numbers. The next day we did base 10 blocks but we had to regroup with them. Then we were, then we were diving into number lines. And then we did another day of number lines but our number lines, we had to go above another 10 and add some more after that. So we were doing some regrouping with that. Same thing for these last two days. We were using our partial sums and we were first just dabbling into partial sums and thinking about those hundreds, those tens, and those ones. Then yesterday we were having to regroup and we were showing how we can regroup with those partial sums by lining up our hundreds, lining up our tens, and lining up our ones. Well, today we are focusing on all of these strategies. I'm gonna be looking to see who uses what, and we were going to put up an example of each, and then we're gonna have a chance to think about how these are the same and how they're different, and how we can see that growth in thinking with each of these strategies. But today our focus is going to be how we're seeing that place value come out in each of these different strategies. So remember, when we think of that idea of place value, we know that depending on what place a number is in, the digit is in, will determine how much that number is worth, right? So if I have a number like 444, they're all fours, right? But this four, is worth four. This four is worth what? 40. And this four is worth what? 400. They may all be fours, but they're in a different place. And when they're in a different place, they are worth something different. And so we're really honing in, zooming in on that idea of place value and knowing that wherever that number is, determines how much it's worth, okay? So today, I want you, we're gonna solve this first one, and you are gonna solve it in whatever way works best for you. And I'm gonna be asking some friends to share their strategies. We're gonna put them up here and do a little comparing and contrasting and seeing how they're the same and how they're different. Our first problem today is 273 plus 211, 273 plus 211. How would you show your thinking? What model did you use? How did you show 273? 
And what did you do next? Where are the hundreds in your model? Where are the tens? Where are the ones? What number did you decompose on your number line? Did you decompose both of them? Ah, you just decomposed one. Why did you just decompose one or break that one of those numbers up? And how did you decompose it? Tens, hundreds, and ones. You decomposed your number, but you don't have any picture. Talk to me about that. A partial sums is really helpful, isn't it? And how did you show that number in partial sums? And what did you add together first? And next. Friends, as we do our work, if you are still working at home, I want you to pause that video. I want you to finish your thinking. And then I want you to resume your video so that you can check in and see how does your work connect with our work that we're putting up here. So I have a friend over here that drew out and used those base 10 models. So you showed 273, 200s, okay? Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, seven tens and three ones, okay? And then what did you do? 200s for that next one, 110 and one one, right? So you had four tens, eight ones. How did you know that was eight one, or not eight ones, eight, sorry, oh my goodness, eight four hundreds. Silly, Miss Baker. Eight tens, and how did you know you had eight tens? Seven and one more is eight, okay? And then four ones. Look at that, I got it right. Whoops, a daisy, my goodness. So then what was your total? You had four hundreds, eight tens, and four ones. So you had 484. So you didn't write out 400, eight, 80, and four. You just thought, I have my three digit number, and my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. There's four of those, eight of those, and four of those. All right, how did you solve yours? There's that number line. Before you would do this, did this person decompose one number or both numbers? Both, right? We have our hundreds, tens, and ones. Hundreds, tens, and ones. All right, now go ahead, number line. You started with 273. Okay, and then what did you do? Okay, and why did you add 200? Because in 211, there's 200, okay? And so what did you land on? How did you know it's gonna be 473? 200 plus 200 is 400. Seven tens plus zero tens is seven tens. Three ones, zero ones is three ones, okay? And then what did you do? A 10, all right, and why a 10? There's that 110 in, four, in 211, so that's 483, okay, because seven tens, 110 is eight tens, and then one more is 484. What number did you decompose in this? Just your four, 211, why just your 211? Because you started with 273. Oops, it is if I jump is too big. So you just have to break up that 211 when you're doing that number line instead of both of those numbers. All right, last one, then we're gonna do a little comparing. Okay, stick with me. 270 and three. Okay, and then what did you do? 200, 10, and one. All right, and then what did you do after that? You know, 200 and 200 is 400, 70 and 10 is 80, three and one is four, and that's 484. Okay, seeing so a lot of wiggle waggles as we look at these different ways. So let's take a minute. How are these ways similar and how are they different? 
They did all get 484. Is there some? Yes. These two ways are very similar because they added the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. Did this person not add the hundreds, the tens, and the ones? Ah, hundreds, tens, ones. This one used the picture, okay, with our base 10, our number line. This one just used the equations. Ah, this one just thought about the number that used that place value, the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. We, they all used place value, didn't they? They were breaking it up, hundreds, tens, and ones, and then using that to help them add. Hmm. Let's do the same thing down here for this one. We're going to do the same idea. Remember, any of these ways are available. Try them out. If you do one and you get done, try another. Expand, right? Deepen your understanding about what this is. These are all different ways. They're all showing using place value. They're all getting the same answer. Which one is most comfortable to you? And then try a different one out. This one is, our second launch is 649 plus 184. 649 plus 184. How would you go about solving that? Ooh, this one's a, hum, this one's a humdinger. What digit are you regrouping? Oh, interesting. How do we see that on our in our base 10 blocks? How do we see that when we are doing expanded form and doing our um, partial sums? What would make that easier to add? Ooh, that number line's a humdinger, isn't it? We've got to make it nice and long. All right, friends, again, I want us to stop. Pause me if you are still working. Do not stop working. I want you to keep working at home and just pause me. Then when you are ready, you can resume it and check in and see how your work compares. But don't, don't stop your awesome work just to watch me finish your work and then you can watch me. So pause me up and then you can be ready. Whenever you're ready, you can see me again. All right, talking about what you did with your base 10 blocks. Okay, 600, so I can record in the right way this time, 40 and nine. And then what did you do? 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, okay, and four. All right, what did you do first? All right, so you added your ones. You had nine and four more was 13. Okay, how did you know it was 13? You said nine and one is 10, and then you had three ones, okay? And then what did you do? You added your tens, all right? So you had eight tens and four tens. Okay, so you just made similar where you made, a, you made 100, 80, 90, 100, and then you had two more, so that was 120, two more tens. And then what? 601 is 700. All right, so what did you do once you solved it this way? You add your 700 and your 100 to get 800. Okay, then what did you do? You did your 20 and your 10 to get 30, and then you had your three left over. So you had 800 plus 30 plus three, which got you to 833. So 700, 800. 810, 820, 830, 831, 832, 833. 
Wow, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? We had to regroup twice. Holy guacamole. So how did that look on a number line? Oof. Let's see if we can, let's see if I can make it long enough. Good thing we're not counting by ones, right? Where did you start? 649, okay, and what did you do? Okay, added 100. That seems simple enough. 749, because your ones, your hundreds place changed, okay? Then what? Oof. Eight jumps of 10, okay. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, so 10 more than 749 is? 759, 769, 779, 789, 799. Then what did you do? Oh, 809, you're going to that next 100, okay, then what? 819, 829, holy guacamole. And what did you do? Made one jump to 890, and then a three jumps for 893. Why did I say 893? 830. 833. Holy guacamole. 833. Why did you just jump one and then three more? So it got you that 10. Okay, so you decompose the ones, just make that a little bit easier to add. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Holy guacamole. So what did that look like if we're doing our partial sums? I'm actually going to have somebody show their partial sums looks a little different than this one. So they were 649, our 184. All right, my love, what did you do? 700. 8 and 4 is 120. 9 and 4 is 13. How did this way help you see this? So you have your three ones, your three tens, and your eight hundreds. Lining that straight up. Now it's so important to line it up, right? 833. Friends, remember, our learning target today was thinking about use, adding these numbers using our place value. We were regrouping with the second one, weren't we? And we actually regrouped twice. Knowing that this made 100, and so my hundreds place is going to change. Knowing this was more than 10, and so our tens place is going to change as well. We're being mindful of what place is that number in, how much is that worth, and when we line it up, whether we line it up using our base 10 blocks, we line it up using our partial sum setup, or think about what's changing when we're adding them with our number line. Our digits are changing and the value of it is changing as well. As you are working on your work today, remember, any of these ways can help you solve this work. Some of you might find that when you're not regrouping, the one of these ways is super easy. But when you are regrouping, you kind of go back to those base 10 blocks. Whatever works best for you is what I want you to do, but I do want you to continue to try out different strategies to help you grow as a mathematician. Happy solving, friends. You've been rock stars this week.